Sally Ride almost needs no introduction. Uh, she's an amazing woman with amazing uh, uh, credentials and achievement. She was the first American woman to travel in space. Selected as an astronaut candidate in 1978, Ms. Ride served as a mission specialist on several space shuttle flight crews and special assistant to the Administrator for Long Range and Strategic Planning at NASA. As, as, as a longtime advocate of science education, she found Sally Ride Science in 2001 to motivate girls and young women to pursue careers in the STEM fields. This company creates engaging science material for elementary and middle school students, parents and teachers, to partners with leading universities to offer innovative, hands-on science camps for girls entering fourth through the ninth grade. Ms. Wright has also written five science books for children and served on a number of boards, including the President's Committee on Advisors on Science and Technology. She is also the recipient of the Jefferson Award for Public Service and has been inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. I'd like to say a few words about the importance of, of STEM education, the importance of encouraging girls and young women to pursue their interests in STEM, because they do have those interests, and uh, briefly describe some of the STEM education programs that my science education company, Sally Ride Science, has undertaken, often in partnership with the business community, many of whom are represented here today. Carl Sagan once said, it's suicidal to create an create a society that depends on science and technology in which no one knows anything about science and technology. <laughs> and he was right, and that's what we're approaching today. Science and technology are the engines that drive our economy. And it's really ironic that our society that relies so much on science and technology and got to be a world leader really through our ability to innovate, to engineer, and to explore, now puts so little value or emphasis on science education. And you could ask why STEM education is important. It's important, actually, for a variety of reasons. Of course, it's critical that we inspire the next, uh, the next generation of rocket scientists and environmental engineers and innovators. But it's also critical to prepare the core of the future workforce, whether they're caddies or whether they're people who work for IBM and Raytheon, because the basic living wage jobs increasingly require STEM skills and we need to prepare the workforce of the future for the TIs, for the Exxon Mobiles, for the Raytheons um, of the country. But more broadly, it's critical to create a, sci a scientifically literate citizenry. The issues that we deal with today are, and are increasingly surrounded by um, increasingly have their roots in science and technology, whether these are issues of the environment, of climate change, of medical issues, medical developments, whatever they might be, to be a, um, to be a responsible citizen, to be able to vote intelligently and responsibly, and to be able to make good decisions that affect your lives, the kids of today are going to need a good background in science and math, and we need to give them that that background. We owe that background to them. Now, do we have a problem? Yes, we do. We've heard the statistics. They're well documented. We're not graduating enough scientists or engineers. Furthermore, we're not graduating enough students with basic backgrounds in science and math. And the number of women are still lagging behind the numbers of men, particularly in physics, which is my field, and engineering. Not enough are coming out of high school and expressing interest as college first-year students in those majors. So the problem starts before high school. But the good news is, and I think Phil alluded to this, in elementary school, kids still love science. There have been studies uh, repeated about every 10 years by NCES that uh, survey fourth graders. And consistently they find that 68% of fourth grade boys self-report that they like science 66% of fourth grade girls self-report that they like science. Now there are two wonderful messages there. One is that in fourth grade fully two-thirds of our kids still like science. The schools haven't beaten it out of them yet. And the second good message is that it's as many girls as boys. But then starting at about fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, we start to lose both the boys and the girls, but we lose girls in greater numbers than boys, and it starts right there, and that trend continues. By eighth grade, two times as many boys as girls are likely to say they're considering careers in science, and by twelfth grade, five times as many boys as girls are likely to consider, uh, to say they'll consider a career in engineering. So you can see that the drop-off begins there. And why? It's not because of aptitude, it's not because of interest, 
It tends to be the messages that our society sends to our kids that science and math aren't cool, um, that maybe uh, an 11 year old girl who says she wants to be an electrical engineer still today, even though there are no obstacles to her, gets a different reaction from a, an 11 year old boy who says the same thing. And these are the things that kids at that age start to internalize and it starts to turn them away from science. They may still be good at it, they may still like it, but may, they may think it's not cool to pursue a career in science or math. And that's what we need to change. We need to make it cool again. We need to show them examples of a diverse group of scientists and engineers, normal people, real people, men, women, ethnic minorities who are involved in science and engineering who enjoy those careers. And we have to make the connection to them that science is relevant to their daily lives. And if they are interested in having an impact on their world, and we know that many of the kids today are, are interested in that, that they need, uh, that science and engineering are an excellent way to have an impact and to make a difference in the world that we live in. Thank you very much.